Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. And welcome back to my podcast, Darling. I'm depressed again. Don't tell my mother. We discuss mental health in the youth, in teenagers, adolescents, high schoolers, primary schoolers, college students, adults, elderly, tertiary school students. We have something for everybody. Listen, once you are breathing, once you have blood inside of your body, we have something for you. Now, each episode, we have a certain word, a certain topic or theme that ties everything together, if you will. And the word for this episode will be identity. Identity. Now, let's get into it. So, in case you couldn't tell by the title of the episode, darling, I got into a car crash in my first year of college. How you doing, though? This is going to be about the time that I got into a car crash during my first year of college, and also my first year of college in itself, more particularly how it relates to me and my own identity. Okay, let's get into it. First, let me open up with the story. So, let me set the scene. It's September 11th. September 11th, 2022. And I was heading somewhere with a group of people. I was, you know, heading to a Waffle House because the school that I am at, there is a Waffle House like a couple streets away and we were heading to Waffle House. And you know, it was a pretty it was a pretty chill morning. I had done some light work workout, you know, that morning I was feeling limber. I was feeling like I could breathe. I was just feeling okay, feeling great. I, I felt wonderful. So get in the car, boom, we're going, we're going, we're going. I close my eyes and the next thing that I know, I'm in the back of an ambulance. I wake up in the back of an ambulance. Now, let me break down something for you all, okay? I, for a bohemian, right? As a bohemian, my first thing was, well, I don't know if it's a bohemian thing. It's just a me thing. My first thought was, oh, God, please don't let me die. Jesus, please don't let me die. God, please don't let me die. Oh, Lord, please don't let me die. I said, listen, I call upon Jehovah. I say, Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah. Ne-. Listen, every version of Jesus, every version of God, in the every everything Christian, listen, every Jehovah, I call upon everything. I was praying. I was praying in the back of that ambulance. I was saying, please don't let me die, Jesus. I got so much to live for. Please don't let me die. Oh, Lord, I thank you and I praise you. Please don't let me die. I have never woken up. I have never even been in an ambulance before prior to that. Like, I've never been on a stretch in an ambulance before. I've never been in that situation. So I was terrified. I was literally terrified because I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea what was going on. And I was holding someone's hand, and I just thought, and I, listen, I was praying out loud, and I was saying, oh, God, please don't let me die, Jesus, please don't let me die. Like, I was, I was saying, God, please don't let me die. So I called my older sister, because this is a Sunday. I called my older sister, Jonel, and I was like, Jojo, I got in the car accident. Well, first I texted her because, you know, calling her first, she always busy. She always doing something. So first I was like, I texted her. I was like, Jojo, I got in the car accident. I texted her. I kid you not, this is the, this is one of the quickest times she has ever, like, messaged me back, called me back. She was she called me back like, JJ, JJ, you serious? JJ, you serious? Like, did you really get into a car accident? I was like, yeah, I got in the car because I'm in the back of the ambulance now. And I let her, I let her filter that information down to our parents. I let her, you know, let that information trickle, trickle to my parents because I couldn't just call my mommy and daddy outright. I would not call my mommy and daddy outright. It was already a stressful situation. My pressure already tall. I already feel like something got happened to me. Me calling my mommy and my daddy and then them worrying and me worrying, I couldn't, I just couldn't directly deal with that at the moment. So my sister let, you know, my, my second, my uh, second older sister and my mommy and my daddy, she let them know. So I remember the instance, my mommy called, my mommy was like, JJ, you okay, JJ, you okay, JJ, you okay, what happened, what happened, what happened? First thing first, my mommy got my entire church to pray for me. Apparently, because they were in the service, my mommy told 
No, my mommy told I think it was um yeah, my mommy told someone and the entire church prayed for me and I love my church community. I love my church. Thank God I love my family. The entire church prayed for me, right? And I think it was those prayers. I honestly believe it was those prayers that allowed me to push through and allowed me to I think everything things to be okay with me because that was genuinely one of the most terrifying moments of my life. Genuinely. I have never been more terrified than I was in that moment because I I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die. So, you know, push come to shove, we get to the hospital, say la vie, they do their tests, they, you know, make sure nothing's broken, make sure nothing's beyond repair. And you know what? You know what happens? I ended up coming back to my dorm later on. I ended up coming back to my dorm. It was very painful. Like, I didn't I didn't know it was going to be that. Like, I, I genuinely was like, because I was in extreme amounts of pain. Um, not that day. I, I didn't even know, realize I was bleeding at first. I had cuts on my leg. I had a cut on my arm. And I had a cut on my back, like a gigantic scab on my back. I had, didn't even know I had those things. I was just so exhausted and so tired. I just showered and I laid down. Next day, I wake up in the most pain I have ever felt in my life. And... The entire sequence of events, that car accident and everything going past that, it was an eye-opener for me. It was a gigantic eye-opener for me because, well, first thing first, it taught me that I was, it was like one of the major things that told me, John, you're human. John, you are human. You're a human being. You are capable of being hurt. You are capable of dying. Because even though you're told Oh, okay, just because you're young don't mean you can't die. You know, young people die all the time. It's never something that you actually, like, it doesn't become an actual thought in your head. It didn't become an actual thought in my head until I experienced it. It did not become an actual thought in my head until I experienced it, until I was in the back of an ambulance wondering if I was going to die. So that car accident it was one of the scariest instances in my life and you know what honestly speaking i was so more so concerned about oh my gosh i don't want to die because my family and i i came over here and i'm so far away from them and you all know my daddy tell me my daddy said you was gonna die for food you got you almost cost your life for food <laughs> that's what my daddy tell me you almost cost your life for food because we was going to waffles we were going to waffles say you almost cost your life for food and those were my thoughts. I was scared that I was going to be leaving my family. I was scared that I wasn't going to survive. And all of that terror and all of that hurt and all of that pain, it made me aware of how human I am. It made me aware of how human I am and it also made me aware of how I needed to fortify my identity. And let me break that down for you. Let me break that down for you. So coming to college, right? As a high school student coming into college, it's an, it's an entirely different ball game, all right? You have your fraternities, your sororities, you have all your different types of people, you have your athletes, you have your nerds, you have your, you know, like, it's an entirely different ball game. And so if you're not secure in your identity, if you're not secure in who you are, you can get lost in all the... Jazaz of it all. Jazaz. I don't know if that's the word. Fazaz, Jazaz. You can get lost in the oomph of it all. And coming into college, as I've mentioned before, I, and earlier on in the podcast, yes, I was bullied for years. And it was in the later years of high school that I began to strengthen and become stronger in who I believe that I am and who I am and who I believe that I was. But I still had not completely fortified my identity, right? At the base of it all, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I have the morals, my, princi my principles that my parents and my sisters and my family and church taught me. At the base of it, as the base of it all, that's fortified. Like that, you know, I'm messing with that. You can't tell me Jesus ain't real. You can't tell me God ain't real. Like at the base of it all, I'm good there. But when it came to my personal security and myself and being confident, 
in my personality, in the way that I dress, in the way that I look, in the way that I seemed to other people, and in the way that other people perceived me, it kind of, I was a bit lost in my identity. I was lost because I wanted to be a person that was perceived as having it all together, as being this person that, you know, they come into college and like, they're the, like you know, that they're, do, they, they're doing the thing, they're doing it, right? And in college, there are good influences and there are bad influences. And there are some influences that you have when you first come that you, that you meet that you definitely should not be influenced by. And I say that to say this, when you have an influence or when you have something that causes you to compromise your own identity in a way, or causes you to feel an inadequate in your own identity, it's not for you. It's not for you. No friendship, no partnership, nothing should cause you to feel insecure in yourself who you are as a person, or who you desire to be in your purpose or in the plans of God for your life. Nothing that you have should make you feel inadequate in those areas. And I wish someone had told me that when I was coming into college. But you live and you learn. You live and you learn because I was growing an ego. Like, not a noticeable ego, but, like, and in a way, it got paused. Like, it, it, the car accident made me stop. But in my head, I was beginning to be like, you know, I got, I got two books. I got a published research, you know, a published research paper in a journal. Like, you know, I have these awards. I is the ish, you know, I doing my thing. I doing it. I doing it. I doing it in my head because there were influences that were making me think that I was doing that. And I should, I should be having all this, ah, blah, 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 blah. Right? And the humility that I had learned all of my life, it was beginning to go on the back burner. So, and people, and I know some people sometimes think that I'm crazy for saying this, but when I say that the car accident taught me something, the car accident taught me that, little boy, you need to calm down. You really ain't nobody. Like, you really ain't nobody. You are not better than anyone. You are not the the big gazpacho. You are not the you are not the listen, you are human just like everyone else. You can be hurt and you can die just like everyone else. Chill out. And I needed that little jolt. I needed that little push to remind me of who I was. I'm a humble person. I'm a humble person. Now, keep in mind, being humble doesn't mean I'm going to demean myself or say that, oh, my, it's not that good or whatever. Being humble is acknowledging the fact that I'm talented while also stating where I got it from. Because I am nothing without God. Everything that I can do, everything that I have done, everything that I have accomplished, it's nothing without God. God has given me the ability. He has given me the will, the drive, the need to succeed. Every single thing that I am is because of God, because of the family and the friends and the people that God has placed around me to inspire me, to lift me up. Everything that I have is because of God. And I began to forget that. I began to forget that. So when you begin to lose your identity, when you begin to become so insecure in your identity that you misplace the reason for you being who you are, when you begin to become so obsessed with yourself that you forget the reason that you gained your blessing, that you forget the reason that you became who you became, when you become so obsessed with what you are doing for yourself, that you begin to remove everything else out of the equation, that's when something comes and be like, hold on, I got to bring you back now. That's, the, that's where God came, and he was like, hold on, let me reel you back in now. Let me reel you back in. Let me, let me reel you back in. You're going out there. Let me reel you back in. Because God knows the danger of not being secure in your identity. God knows it. 
When you are not secure in your identity, anyone can come and tell you any old thing. Anyone can come and convince you of any old thing. Anyone can come and make you believe any old thing, and you will believe it. You would believe them not only because you're insecure in your identity, you're insecure in yourself. And you want to be liked so much, you want to, the way the people to perceive you, you want them to perceive you as the perfect human being, as someone that is so respectable and so wonderful and so amazing that you are willing to do almost anything to please them. And so your identity becomes a we identity. As in, everyone has a say on who you get to be as a person. The opinions of every other individual become the foundation for how you operate, for how you make your choices, for how you decide who you are going to be. And I had to realize that coming into college, that's a common thing. Like, that, like that, that, that identity crisis, it's a real thing because it's an entirely new environment. And it's not even just going to college. If you are not fortified in your identity when you go in any new environment, you are going to get screwed over so quickly your hair could spin. That's honestly what happens. And you're entering a place, and I'm not just talking about college, even in new environments. Even when I was going into high school, it was a new environment. Yes, these are the same classmates. Yes, this is the same school. Yes, these are the same teachers. But it's a new, entirely new method of learning, of existing. For example, everyone getting the grade 7, everyone start cussing all of a sudden. No one curses more than a 7th grader. Okay? Let me explain that to you. No one curses more. Listen, let me tell you all something. Let me explain something to you all. Because in the 6th grade, you know, your mouth of a hole. Well, some people, some people mouth of a hole. So, you know, you feel, you feel that little fear and you just don't want to, you know, you don't know. But when you get in grade 7, mother free is, no one has cussed more than a 7th grader. All is is blanking this and blanking that and but you blanking stupid. And but you, but let me tell you something. When I say no one curses more than a 7th grader, because it's a change in environment. You are growing. You are developing. And so... We don't try to allow our identities to naturally progress with us. We try to speed the process. Because I believe identities should, our identities should grow as we grow. You know, we should match our identities. We should, it's not something that you can just rush into. It has to develop. It has to grow. It has to blossom, right? But when you get into that, different environment all of a sudden it's okay i'm in a new environment i'm older so my identity has to be older okay i'm in a new workplace i um everyone looks so pretty okay so my identity is i'm the new it i'm i, I got the hardest thing i got the hardest things on i got the hardest shoes the hardest thing i is the pepper stepper i is all of that right but when you look at it you're not fortified in your identity and your identity is just a copy of everyone else around you so then it becomes an issue of, is this who I am or I am, am I just a mirror for other people? The person that I look at when I look in the mirror, is that me or is that just a physical manifestation of how I want people to perceive me? Who is it? Who is that person when you look in the mirror? What is your identity? And that can be a difficult question for some of us. It can be a very difficult question because a lot of us don't like to acknowledge the fact that our, identi our identities are kind of... Our identity is kind of... Some of us don't have identities that we need to be bragging about. I ain't gonna lie. And that including myself because no person is perfect. We all have flaws. We all have done some things that are not so cute, that are not so good, that are not so great. And we, a lot of us critique ourselves and we want the perfect identity. We want to be that perfect person. We want to be known for being that perfect person. We want to be known for being the person that everyone emulates and everyone wants to be like. A lot of us be trying, I, I, I hate to say it like this, but a lot of us be trying to be Jesus. 
if we're being honest about it. We want to be perfect. Buddy, you can't be perfect. You can't have the perfect identity. You cannot. You can try. I tried for years. I tried for a very long time to have the perfect identity. It just fell through. It just fell through. It just fell through. At first, I tried to have the identity that my teachers wanted me to have. So I was the teacher's pet, and I was all of this, and I was all of that, and I was blah, blah, blah. Then I wanted to have the identity that my classmates wanted me to have. So I was, you know, trying to be the cool guy, and blah, 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 blah. And then at one point, I was just like, forget. I can't, I can't be what either of y'all want me to be, so I could be myself. You can't let someone choose your identity for you. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You have to be willing to grow and develop as a person. You have to be willing to make those choices that will help you to progress in your identity. And you have to be assured in who you are. You have to be. You have to be assured in who you are. You can't have an identity that's fortified unless you trust yourself and love yourself enough to know that yes i am a person who is made men who has made many mistakes who is still making mistakes but i'm trying and i appreciate myself for that and yes my identity may not be perfect my identity may not be everything that i want it to be but it's getting there and i would rather be the imperfect version of myself than the false perfection that you want me to be. I would rather be that. I would take my flaws over the perfection that you want me to be any day. Because while I do work for improvement, I realize that there is a beauty in my imperfection that makes me who I am. And that's the greatest part of recognizing who we are in our identity accepting our accepting our imperfections and striving to improve ourselves while remaining true to morals and principles that are beneficial not only to us but those around us so when it comes to identity when it comes to knowing who you are when it comes to believing in who you are that has to be something that you are so strong in that no one can sway you, no one can make you disbelieve, no one can make you. And that is why for someone who is, and I'm going to take this to the faith aspect of it, for someone who believes in God, believing in God helps me to be so strong in my identity like it's insane. It's honestly insane. Because yes, I have believed in God my whole life, but genuinely building and having that relationship with him. Someone could tell you that you like you so, you know, uh, like you so ugly, you stupid, you ain't nothing, you is a piece of ha ha ha. Someone could tell you that. And listen, yes, you're human. Yes, you might feel that yes, you may feel their words. But if the being that created the universe, right, tells me. That I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm made in his image. I'm the realest one. Like I basically as the realest one alive. Basically, like I can't even run on because like I so I'm so amazing. What does it matter what you have to say about me? And that's been my mindset. Like, if God thinks that I am <laughs> like I have the best thing since sliced bread, why does your opinion matter? If you have something negative to say, it doesn't. And so for my faith, my faith is a gigantic part of my identity because it's the thing that roots it. It's the thing that gives it strength, the thing that gives it purpose. My faith gives identity purpose. It's because of my faith that I know that my identity is not meant to be a shield, but rather a light. My identity is not meant to shield me from the world, but rather it's to share my light with the world. It's meant to illuminate who I am as a person, not guard the truth. 
And a lot of people don't realize that a lot of people think that you know, my identity, I, I just meant to be, I, I, I just need to be who y'all need me to be. I need y'all, I need to be who you want me to be. But your identity is meant to expose you. It's meant to bring light to those little quirks that you have, those little things that you do, those little ways that you might laugh or the little ways that you might cry. Your identity is meant to reveal the truth about who you are. It's essentially the pathway to your character. Your identity shows those things. So when we walk around and we have these false identities, we have these images, these masks on, and we don't want people to see who we really are. We're hiding behind this, this want, this need to be perfect, this desire to be the best thing alive. The oompa loompa donka do. We just want to be the most spectacular thing ever, right? When we walk around with that false image and we show the world that person. We're not bringing light to ourselves, but we're bringing darkness because we're hiding. We're hiding. We're hiding away the parts of us that make us who we are. We're hiding away the parts of us that make us unique, the parts of us that make us special, and we're exchanging them for what we believe the world expects from us. We build up a persona based on the expectations of the world, based on the desires and the wants of the world, rather than the needs of our own souls and hearts. That's what we do. And that persona can be a very dangerous thing because, and I've spoken about this earlier on in the podcast. I've spoken about this, trust me. If you only watch them earlier episodes, go watch them. Trust me, I'll be right there when y'all come back, but go watch them. I've spoken about this. When it came to my identity is, a part of me is, I like to speak up for myself. And the Bible says, and this is a belief, the Bible says there's a time to be silent, which I believe, which I believe, because my big sister always telling me, Jojo always telling me, JJ, you don't got to reply to everything. And I believe that. I honestly do. I don't always have to reply, and I'm learning what to give my energy to. There's also a part of the Bible, there's a part of that book right there, in Ecclesiastes, I believe, that says, There's a time to be quiet, and there's a time to speak up. And I have always, I like, I speaking up for myself, speaking up for people in general, that's just always been a thing that I love to do. But when I was in school, when I was in school, that's a part of my identity I used to hide away. I used to hide it away. Because it was expected of us to sit there, take what we take, take the insults, Take all that and roll with it. So I shove that part of my identity deep, deep down, and I pack all of the fake smiles and the fake laughs and the insults on. I packed it all down. So I didn't speak up for myself when I needed help. I didn't speak up for others when I saw that others needed help, even though I wanted to, because that's a part of my identity. That's a part of who I am as a person to use my voice. I didn't do it. Because the world wanted me to be, the body wanted me to be, the governing body wanted me to be the perfect, respectable young man. And that's what I tried to be until I realized that I was poisoning myself. I was holding back my voice. I refused to speak up. That's why when I got into high school and I started getting later on, I I spoke up. There were instances where I said something back. Did I say it respectfully? Yes, I did. And I say, and I realize in this moment, yes, I did say it respectfully. I did say it respectfully. Because a part of my identity is also respect. Respect, Mildness and respect will carry you throughout the world. But I did say something back. I did say something back. Because that's a part of my identity. Speaking up when I see something wrong going on. And you know what? Some people may not like it. Some people may not like it. There was a time where I had a teacher kicking the door, bombing the door. I, th- I said it was wrong. And you know what? It, I, and there are times where it's in my identity. I have to rein it back because I kept going. Because he was, uh, it was like, I don't have to apologize to a child. And the thing in my head is my identity was telling me, 
you don't have to apologize to a child, but that's you telling saying saying I don't have to apologize to a child as a grown man. It takes a grown man to apologize to a child. I was like, that is the worst apology I've ever heard. That's what my identity told me to say. And, you know, I respectfully said that it wasn't a good apology. It wasn't a real apology. And, you know, there's a part of me that has to learn how to, how to learn how to tone it back because I kept going. I kept going. I, I, I didn't stop. And I, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a back and forth, but it was like, it was a mutual exchange because I was asked for my opinion and I gave it. And because I gave my opinion, you know, I, I, I gave my full opinion and, you know, my one, my, one of my best friends was sitting back with me was like, hey, Jay, John, just change it. Just calm down, John, just calm down. And I was like, no, I don't want to calm down because it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's very wrong. What he did was very wrong. But I'm going to kick on doors. It's very wrong. Yelling at people. It's very wrong. But you see, that's just a part of my identity. That's who I am as a person. Somebody may be non-confrontational. They may not want to do that. They may not want to tell a teacher that they're doing something wrong. They may not want to speak, speak like to say that to a teacher. And that's okay. That's absolutely okay. That's their identity. But for me, I got tired of holding that part of my identity back. Because I will speak up when I see something wrong going on. Or it's my part of my identity. I won't just stay somewhere where I know something wrong happened or something wrong went on. That's not my identity. Because my morals and my principles are also part of my identity. And if something in my spirit tells me that that is wrong, I am going to act accordingly. That is what I'm going to do. And like I said, no person has the perfect identity. Because I know I don't have the perfect identity. There are times when I have to rein it in. There are times when I realize I can't waste my energy on every single thing and every single person. But it's still my identity, and I'm working with it. You have to embrace the identity for everything that it is. The good parts, the bad parts, the ugly parts, the in-between, the parts you don't want anybody to see. Listen, if you know who you are as a person, don't let anyone make you question that. And I'm not just talking to people my age. I'm talking to primary schoolers. I Listen, because even, if, even with primary school, it started from primary school, I have always known who I was because I had a family that taught me. I had a church that taught me. I had a community that taught me the morals and principles that I needed. And based on those morals and principles, I have always known that I like to speak up. I'm using that specific um, part of my identity. I have always known that I like to speak up. I've always known that I like to have a voice. And the, worst mis and the worst thing that I could have done in my younger years was allow others to convince me that I did not. I could have saved myself so much trouble with bullying. I could have saved myself so much trouble with some of the teachers that I dealt with. I could have saved myself so much trouble. I really could have. I really could have. Because it was so, it was such a big thing. It was such a major part of my life. I could have saved myself so much trouble with some of the people I interacted with. I could have, if I had just learned to be secure in my identity at an early age, and it's important that we teach our children to be secure in who they are at an early age so they don't make those same mistakes. Like my niece, Amani. Amani is a, I love the fact that she's growing and she's becoming this beautiful little girl and this beautiful young woman. She is so secure. And I, let me tell you something. Amani thinks she is the bomb.com slash org. Listen, Amani believes that she is beautiful, that she is smart, that she is important. She believes those things. And we try to instill that in her. My sister tries to instill that in her because it's important that she knows that. It's important that she integrate those things into her identity. Because when you have that foundation and when you have those beliefs and when you are structurally sound in who you are as a person, no one can blow that down. They can huff and they can puff, but they can, ooh, but they can't blow it down. And the thing is, the thing is with that is it starts from that young age. You have to teach, listen, if I, if I was secure in my identity, ain't no way I would have let that, young, that lady ask me who my language teacher was. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. 
There was no way I would have allowed her to ask me who my language teacher was. There was no way I would have allowed her to make allowed her to make me. Oh no, no one can make you feel stupid. There was no way I would have allowed her to disrespect us or disrespect me in some of the ways that she did as a grown woman. There was no way I would have done that. I would have respectfully used my voice. But because I wasn't so secure in my identity, because I wasn't so secure in who I was as a person, I allowed the verbal abuse of a very malignant person to continue for a very long time. And years later, I had to look back on it and I had to be like, I have to be like, Lord, I forgive, I forgive that person. And I also forgive myself. I forgive myself for not allowing me to have access to my full identity. The identity that would have used my voice. The identity that would have done something proper. The identity that would have respectfully shut it down. The identity that would have went to my parents instead of saying, oh, no, I don't want to make no noise because no one could believe me. The identity that would have used my voice. I wish that I would have used that identity. And that is my prayer. To no longer be focused on the past, but to continue walking into the future with my identity being true and genuine and who I am as a person and believing who I am as an individual and loving who I am for all the parts of it, the good, the bad, and the in-between. That is my mission and that is my goal. Well, that about wraps up everything that we have today for this episode. <laughs> Remember, y'all, identity, it's a, it's a, it can be a powerful thing. And you don't want it can make or break you, and you don't want it to break you. All right? My name is John Shaquille Boyter Jr., and this has been the podcast. Darling, I'm depressed again. Don't tell my mother. I'll see you next time.